Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about if we should be reforming or abolishing the ATF, okay? Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, which we all know should be a convenience store, not a government agency. But before you all jump up and say abolish the ATF, uh, there's a couple of things we got to understand here, okay? If you abolish the ATF, right? you still have all these gun control laws still in place. What they're going to do is they're going to take, they're going to, let's say they shut down the ATF. They're going to make the FBI do the job of the ATF, okay? Uh, the FBI is just as corrupt, and they are a lot more well-funded, okay? Um, they have more offices. They have more staff. They're going to be a lot more dangerous to us, okay? Uh, they have the same ability uh, to do 6 a.m. no-knock raids and kill you, okay? So you can't just say abolish the ATF uh, and basically just, you know, basically take out the ATF and put the FBI in its place to do exactly what the ATF has been doing, except they're going to do it better, okay? Uh, by better, I mean worse for us, okay? Um, so you cannot just abolish the ATF unless you get rid of all the gun control laws okay so that's that's where we are now uh looking at the makeup of the congress okay uh it is a very slim margin okay we're going to be lucky if we even get uh national reciprocity to pass okay so uh, it's a really thin margin i don't think we're gonna basically we're not we're not going to um uh, repeal all the gun control laws that would allow for us then to abolish the ATF. Okay, so we got to be a little bit more, um, you know, a, a little bit more strategic and do what's in our best interest here, okay? So what makes a lot of sense, right, and what I think is actually doable um, is to take away the law enforcement function of the ATF, okay? So what I want is the ATF to be a bookkeeping agency, okay? Now, when the ATF was originally founded, I mean, they were basically a tax collection agency. They were like the IRS. They were not a law enforcement agency, okay? So um, we got to get the, the, the ATF back to being just a bookkeeping agency. Now, one of the things that the ATF does is uh, they license FFLs to, so that we can buy guns, okay? Now, as the laws are right now, right in order for us to buy guns from the manufacturers right or commercially we have to get it from an ffl so again if you just abolish the the atf uh what's going to happen is the the i think the the licenses of the ffls are going to expire within a year or two whatever the term is and they're not going to be able to renew them because there's no atf uh and that means they're not going to be able to sell you the guns that you want to buy okay so, so again we can't just abolish the atf unless we get rid of all the underlying gun control laws uh that they are enforcing okay so so as long as we got laws in place that say that we have to that that, that in order to buy guns uh, commercially, we have to go to an FFL, and we ha and we ha we need that ability to buy guns commercially. Because you might say, "Well, we'll just buy guns in the private market." Well, there's only so many guns in the private market, um, and if all we're doing is selling the guns that we already have back and forth, that doesn't increase the overall number of guns. Okay, so what we need to do, we need mass production of guns so that we can get guns into the hands of many people as possible. Right. So more people have a vested interest in protecting the Second Amendment. So to do that, we need commercial sellers. Uh, and as the law is right now, we need FFLs uh, and, if, and FFLs basically need the ATF to do the paperwork so they can sell the guns legally. Okay, so what we want right now is the ATF to go back to just being uh, a bookkeeping agency. Uh, no law enforcement, okay? Uh, basically, we want to disarm the ATF. We want to take their guns away, uh, except for the security guard they got at the front door. We want to disarm the ATF, okay? Um, we want to keep the ATF in a separate building from the FBI, okay? We don't want the, we don't want the ATF to be a subdivision of the FBI. We want them in a separate building um, so that they're not having coffee together. They're not going out to lunch together. So that if some law and some issue comes up that requires law enforcement, uh, the the ATF people who are just bookkeepers 
now have to reach out to the FBI, which are at a different location, and get this information to them. Uh, and it basically just, you know, slows things down a little bit uh, and gives everybody a chance to, to look in and see what's going on. Because if you've got different agencies interacting with each other, uh, there's a better chance that if there's something going, if, they, if they're doing something wrong, somebody will see it, right? Rather than if everything's being done in the same building, right? Because again, if we just abolish the ATF, basically they're just going to remove the letters ATF from the building and they're just going to put FBI on it. And you've got the same people doing the exact same thing, okay? So we do not want that. We want the separate ATF as a bookkeeping agency uh, in the separate building uh, with a lot of space between them and the FBI, okay? Um, so one of the things that we want to get done is uh, there's been issues in the past with the with the ATF keeping an illegal gun registry of owners of gun owners. Uh, we want it written into law that they must destroy it. That it would be criminal for them for anybody to knowingly maintain such a gun registry. Um, so so that's one of the things that we want to write into this uh, reformation. Okay, so there's no way for them to legally maintain a registry, and that there would be criminal penalties for anybody that does so. Um, uh, now, as it is right now, FFLs have to keep their records for 20 years. We can we can change that to five years. So after five years, it would be legal for the FFLs to destroy their records, not give them to the ATF, destroy them. Okay. So again, this is a small thing that we can probably get through this uh, Congress that has very slim margins. Okay. Because again, uh, in the Senate, in order for anything to pass the Senate, we need 60 votes, right? It, yeah, we have the 50 vote majority, but they can filibuster it, which means basically filibustering traditionally meant that uh, that somebody would get up and just talk nonstop and run out of time, okay? Because there is no time limit for, to for, for, for speaking on the Senate floor. So in order to break that, right, to get somebody to shut up, uh, you need 60 votes, okay? So that's what the whole idea of the 60 vote culture uh, comes in on. So we need 60 votes to allow something, you know, to proceed on to the vote, uh, to a vote in the Senate. And I think we got 53 senators right now, uh, at least two, maybe three of them are rhinos. Uh, and then on top of that, you got to try and get seven Democrats to come over. So you got to target, you know, basically uh, uh, Republican senators in blue states. It's hard. Okay. So we got to, we got to think small here in terms of Try to get victories, you know, try to go after the victories that we can actually get, right? Rather than think pie in the sky and, you know, after two years, we got absolutely nothing to show for. All right, so moving on. Uh, oh, with the suppressors and the uh, SBRs, instant approval, okay? There's no, I mean, if you can go to the gun store, get an instant background check, there's no reason why they can't do an instant uh, approval for suppressors and SBRs, okay? So that's something that's reasonable. That's something that, that, we, that we can get changed. I did a separate video discussing, tr you know, a separate law to try and get SBRs and suppressors out of the NFA. You know, I've already talked about that. We'll talk about it towards the end of the video again. Uh, but as long as, as long as SBRs and suppressors need to be registered with the ATF uh, and even in even the class three uh, automatic weapons, we should be able to get instant approval. Okay. Uh, the, the sellers of these things should be able to submit an application and it should get instantly approved there's no reason that why it shouldn't be approved right unless you unless there's actually a criminal record that comes up okay so, so they should be able to get instant approval on all the things that people are now waiting for months and a year up to a year to get approval on okay uh, okay uh, written into law okay uh, we need to we need to spell out that the ATF has no power to make law. Okay, their, and specifically, their opinions mean nothing. Uh, they have to, you know, basically they have to adhere to the law as strictly as it is written. Okay, so that's one of the things we want to put into the, into this plan. Okay, um, and uh, and also put in there that the the either the individual or the FFL gets the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so if some issue comes up that's kind of gray. The, the individual or the FFL gets the benefit of the doubt. So, for example, if you're filling out an application and you forgot to put in your middle initial or something, okay, uh, they can't come after you and say that you intentionally 
omitted that information, you get the benefit of the doubt, okay? Um, so that's something that we want specifically written. Okay, so I said everything. Now, on the FBI side, and I'll do a separate video detailing on the FBI side, uh, because, again, the, the I want to pull the law enforcement um, duties out of the ATF, basically put them strictly with the FBI, because the guy goes somewhere. And, I, again, we're dealing with very slim margins in the Congress, so, you know, you got to be realistic as far as what we can actually get past. Um, one of the things I'd like to get done is, on the FBI side, prohibit... 6 a.m. no-knock raids, okay? That should be explicitly forbidden uh, unless it's like a, a situation where, you know, s somebody has actually killed a number of people already, okay? So unless it's really a life and death, life and death uh, scenario, okay, um, there, should be, there should never be 6 a.m. no-knock raids, okay? It's just like in a lot of places, uh, um, hot pursuit is illegal. So it's illegal for cops like to chase somebody through city streets at like 100 miles an hour uh over whatever they they ran you know let's say they somebody run, uh, runs a red light and then cops chasing them and they refuse to stop okay the cops can't continue chasing that person in, in most places uh through through the city streets at 100 miles per hour because there's a good chance that they're going to do a lot more damage that innocent people might die they're supposed to break off and then just try to isolate this person. So the same deal should apply here, right? Just like cops can't do 100 mile per hour chases through city streets over, you know, petty stuff. Uh, the FBI or any law enforcement agency should not be able to do 6 a.m. no knock raids where they're kicking down your door and you and you think you're being home invaded and naturally you're going to your gun, right? Because you think that you're about to be killed by somebody. Um, you know, that, that should be prohibited unless it is actually a life and death situation. Okay, so this has to be put into the law at the point where uh, the, the, the law enforcement responsibilities are being transferred from the ATF to the FBI. I mean, this would be a good place to just sneak it in there, and it would apply to all FBI applicants, okay? Uh, okay, strict interpretation of the law on the FBI side, right? So as this thing gets transferred over... The FBI doesn't get to issue opinions. They gotta, uh, they gotta enforce the law exactly as it was written. Okay, uh, and and lastly, same thing I said before on the FBI side, the citizen or the FFL uh, always gets the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so um, I, I think that these are some realistic reforms uh, that we can that we can try and enact on the ATF. Uh, yeah, ab ab you know, abolishing the ATF. Sounds, you know, makes for really good headline, right? It makes for really good clickbait, okay, that a lot of people put out there. But that's not realistic as long as there's still gun control laws in place that somebody has to enforce, right? Because all they're going to do is just going to, you know, if you get rid of the ATF, now all of a sudden the, somebody else has, is going to do it. And it's going to be the FBI. And you're going to get stuck with a, you know, with a more powerful agency, right? A, a more corrupt agency. So let's uh, proceed in such a way that it, it actually helps us, uh, not hurt us, okay? Um, really quick, I want to add, I want to mention gun rights agenda that I mentioned in another video, right? So real quick, some things that I think, aside from this, that I said here, some things that I think we can actually get done with the slim margin that we have uh, in the Congress right now, right? Uh, after this 2024 election, uh, getting suppressors, um, and uh, SBRs out of the NFA. Okay, the reason why this has a really good chance of passing uh, is because it doesn't affect the blue states. Okay, so the blue states aren't going to have that much of an interest uh, in fighting those things, right? They're not going to invest too much political capital in fighting those things. So that's realistic. Okay, um, getting SBRs and suppressors out of the NFA. Um, national reciprocity. Okay, now one of the reasons I like this is because uh, Trump. Is a, you know was a concealed carrier. This is something that he can relate to. Uh, lots of people in the Congress are concealed carriers. So again, this is something that we have a chance of maybe you know winning over a couple of Democrats over to our side. Okay, so that's something I think we can try to try to get through the Congress. Um, the other thing I want to do is um, uh, protection for travelers. Right. So for example, you know if, if you are traveling across the country. You know they can't say that you know that they that you know they can't say that the gun that you have or the, or, or the magazine size is illegal. They're gonna arrest you and charge you with a felony. And 
uh, and ruin your life. Okay, so there has to be uh, better protections uh, for travelers. Okay, what's legal in one state should be legal in other states. Worst case scenario, they should be able to basically say, okay, this is illegal in our state. We're going to escort you to the border and give you back your property and you keep your stuff on that side of the border. Okay, so there has to be a, a protection like that. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, the Hughes Amendment. Okay. Uh, we should basically try to repeal the Hughes Amendment, which prevents the, um, uh, the, the, the production of automatic firearms for the civilian market. They would still be, they would still have to be registered in the NFA. So again, there's a reason for the ATF to exist. Uh, at this point in time, there's no way we're going to win over enough congressmen uh, to, to completely repeal the NFA. Uh, but if we can repeal the Hughes Amendment, and it'll allow for the production of more automatic firearms to be sold and then and also entered into that registry. Uh, one of the things that it'll do is it'll obviously it'll bring down the, the price, right? Because these things can cost as much as like thirty thousand dollars because there's a limited supply out there. But it will also um, uh, as more and more produced, it will get automatic firearms into that common use category. Okay, so at some point, you know, because right now I think there's like I think 180,000 of them out there. Uh, that are um, uh, that are on the registry, right? So the bar that was set in the Catano case was 200,000. So if something goes over 200,000, uh, it now becomes a, a common use item, right? So if we can repeal the Hughes Amendment uh, and get companies pumping out, uh, you know, automatic firearms, we can get it above that bar, get more than 200,000, uh, you know, you know, out there in circulation, and I'm pretty sure that the number will quickly go into quickly go into the millions. Uh, and now we have a separate case to make that these firearms are now common use and they cannot be banned uh, per the Supreme Court. Okay, so I, I talked about that in another video. I just wanted to kind of refresh that here. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Okay, uh, I think this makes a lot more sense as far as dealing with the ATF. You know, uh, I think I think it's going to be in our benefit to proceed this way where we can actually get something done rather than, you know, say abolish the ATF and it's not going to get done. And even if it get it does get done and they abolish the ATF, well now, you know, if the FBI takes over, it's probably going to be even worse for us because they're just as corrupt. Okay. So I'll talk to you all soon.